Hey there, Hofstra fans. Welcome inside the WB Mason Coach Report. Matt Durant joined by the Hofstra Program Head Coach, Larissa Anderson. Just getting back from a series down at Elon, where they split the first day of the doubleheader, and then they won the third game on Sunday. Coach, just your overall thoughts on the series. Finished on a great note. Played unbelievable yesterday. Really competed for all 11 innings. Um, outstanding performance by Jess Peslak. Very happy with how she threw. Um, probably the best she's thrown all year. Um, from start to finish, and, and just overall very happy with how the team performed. Well, you end up splitting the first day of the doubleheader. It seems like that's sort of a, a trend with this team, just to split doubleheaders and then have to finish strong on Sundays. What do you think is it about this team that, for some reason, in, in a 10-3 to victory, has all the offense in the world, but then in a 7-1 to loss, the offense sort of slacks a little bit, and then you have to make it up on a Sunday? You know what? It, it's really the, the tone that, that starts in the circle. Um, just past slack has been very, very competitive and has given us an opportunity to win. And the inexperience of the other pitchers has really created a, um, a different tenor on the field. And you can see that they know they're going to have to score more runs than they typically do based on who's pitching on the mound. Um, and that really sets the tone. And that's one of those things that we're trying to get the team to overcome. And they have to compete all the time, that it doesn't really matter. And with the offensive power that we have, you know, we, we've proven that we can score 15 runs, that we can have double-digit hits. So the, they have to overcome that adversity. And, you know, they showed that and they really competed on Sunday. But we have to overcome that in a second game. We can't expect Jess Peslak to pitch every single game to give us an opportunity. And Scarpato and Grimmer are just as good. So then it's just one of those things that the team has to start to feel a little bit more comfortable. Well, you actually had a handful of home runs in that first game. You talk about the power and you talk about just what this offense can do. But when Jess Paslak is in the circle, you got a couple of home runs, you had a pinch hit grand slam. Just how much do you think that the, the pitching really does affect the offense? It does. It's tremendous. You know, and over the history of Hofstra softball, with seeing the dominant pitching that we had, when, when you have the, the All-Americans like Olivia Galati and Kaylee Lottie and, and those types of pitchers, you only need to get one or two runs because you knew your pitching was going to be so dominant. And we're in a situation right now that, that our pitching is competitive, but we might have to score a little bit more than one or two. Um, you know, it showed that on, on Sunday we can compete and, and only put a couple runs across the board, and our pitcher, pitching can hold us to a couple runs. Um, but, but they know they have to score more, and that puts a lot of pressure on the offense, knowing that if Scarpato's ERA is, is four plus, then we have to score more than four runs to win a ball game. And that just that puts a lot of pressure because, again, it's not how many hits you get, it's when you get them. Um, so then they press a little bit more. But that's one of those things that they have to have that confidence in knowing they're never out of a ball game. Well, you talk about Scarpato's ERA and how that affects the team, but just it seems like not so long ago we talked about Madison Grimm's ERA and how that affects the team when she's starting. What is the mindset going into the – I, it looks like the second game of those doubleheaders, choosing whether it's going to be Grimm or Scarpato as a starter. It's Well, Scarpato doesn't give up as many free bases as Grimm does, and that's something that we have to continually work on. <clears throat> Grimm's game situation is a lot different than her bullpens. Her bullpens are absolutely amazing. She throws you know, the mid to upper 60s in, in the bullpen, and it's just that mental transition in that game pressure. Um, she's putting way too much pressure on herself, and we've been trying to get her to relax and have that comfort and not get caught up in, in the result, because um, she has no control over the result, and that's just a growing experience. Um, Scarpato, because she keeps the ball down, hopefully, because she's a drop ball pitcher, then we're not going to get her as much, because Grimm throws up in the zone when she does leave it over the heart of the plate, or when she's not on time, she's leaving the ball out of the zone. So because Scarpato keeps the ball down, you know, it's our hope that we're not going to get hurt as much. Well, you look at the third game of the weekend after a split decision on Saturday, you go back to Jess Paslak, which is which is clearly the the obvious move there, but ends up going to extra innings. She throws 133 pitches. Just talk about the, the resiliency and the endurance that she provides you, not just the, the talent level. You know, in the fifth inning, I looked at the pitch count. She was only at 57 pitches in the fifth inning. Um, so it was at that point when, when it was such a close game and it was 0-0 at the time that I said to myself, okay, we go extra innings, I know that Peslak's going to be able to go a little bit further than seven, uh, which she hasn't done all year, but it was because the pitch count was so low. She was getting early outs early in the count. She wasn't having to go deep, which is when, when she starts to get fatigued, when she's always working you know, full counts and going deep into the count. Um, so I knew that she had the, the resiliency to be able to go that deep. And I was so impressed in how far that she went. Um, she was able to work her curveball on the outside part of the plate. 
um, and being able to stay there, which gave her a lot of easy outs and, and lazy fly balls to the right side, which really helped her approach. Well, to compare Sunday to the first day, first day you had a lot of offense in one game, not a lot in the second game, but you either gave up a lot of runs or you held them to not very many at all. The third day, it was a very tight game, 4-3 to three ended up the, the final score. What do you think it was about that last day where it was a, a happy medium between great pitching and some good offense? You know what the big difference is? There wasn't any wind on Sunday. So both pitchers um, attacked and the wind wasn't a factor in what they were throwing, which really helped Jess Peslak because of the way the wind that was blowing across the field. It allowed her to throw both sides of the plate. On Saturday, she was really limited to one side of the plate because the wind was holding up that outside curve. Um, which really made a big difference. And, and just being able to attack early in the count, their hitters were very aggressive against her, um, and she was able to make great pitches, which got her through the, through the innings a lot faster. Um, again, we got to capitalize a lot more on, on Saturday in that second game. We have to be able to jump early. Um, I see that our, our bats our first time through are outstanding, and then we go through the middle of the lineup and we're not as strong, and then we always are very resilient in you know, the last inning, you know, trying to have more quality at bats, and we just have to be more consistent all the way through. A couple of players that stepped up with RBIs in that third game, Real Petrofessa and Alyssa Cazola. Just talk about the, the matchmaking you have to do sometimes between starters and the utility players to really ensure that you have a successful day offensively. You know, exactly, because we have so much depth. And I'm constantly looking into the dugout and p putting us in the best possible situation to be successful um, based on pitch speed. What is the pitcher throwing? What are our hitter strengths? And where can I, which is why I put Isabel Hansberry in in that situation, because it, it was a great matchup. Um, you know, leaving Kazula in, and I made a defensive change putting her left field because the game was on the line with a winning run at second base, and Kazula has a great arm. So it's making those game time adjustments um, to put us in the best possible situation to be successful. And, and you know, again, you have no control over where the balls hit, um, but it was great to see the team come through. A minute ago, you mentioned the win. Now, on Long Island, obviously, you don't have mm -hmm. ideal conditions, but you just had three games against Elon down at Elon. You have five games coming up on the road. How big do you think it is to maybe avoid the Long Island weather for a short amount of time here? You know, it's funny because at Elon, when they were concerned about the wind on Saturday, with a 25 mile an hour wind, right. I said that's typical on Long Island. So you know, it's just another day. Um, a little home field advantage. Exactly, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's one of those things. On the road, we we play very well. We play our first four weeks of the season on the road, and it's great to get the players in, in that routine um, where they don't have very many distractions. So on the road or at home, you know, we're just glad to play ball. Um, you know, it is great to play in front of our home fans, and it's unfortunate that we have so many road trips this year. But again, you know, we just have to go out and make sure we're doing what we're doing. Lastly, Coach, before we let you go, you got back up towards that 500 mark against a team that was already plus 500. How big do you think it is to play well against good teams and really try to sweep a couple of these series to get back to where you think this program should be at? You know, and what I told the team on Saturday after that loss is this, the CA, the way the CA right now, it's not the old CA. Everybody in the conference is outstanding. And we have to come to play every single day. There's no easy games on our schedule. And it's, be, it's getting the team to understand that, that they have to go out and they have to win every single game, that no one's going to hand us a game. Hofstra still has the target on her back, and they always will because of the tradition that the program has. So we have to make sure that we play the best of our ability in order to beat these teams because they're really good. Um, and we have to go out and play the way we did on Sunday to give us an opportunity to win. And if we don't, we're going we're gonna to lose. It's that plain and simple. Head coach of the Hofstra Pride softball team, Larissa Anderson. I'm Matt Durant. We'll be back here on the W.B. Mason Coach Report just next week.